to our top story this afternoon and hundreds of anti-fracking campaigners are protesting outside Parliament today calling on fracking to be put on hold. Now they say they want the government to take a proper look at the growing body of evidence showing its harmful impact. It comes as a group of MPs claim fracking could derail efforts to tackle climate change. Well Luke Blackall is outside Parliament now and um, Luke um, what are protesters hoping to achieve today? Well, that's right, CL. The, the, today, in going through Parliament, is the last reading of the government's infrastructure bill. It's quite a wide-ranging bill, but inside that are proposals for fracking. That's getting shale gas out from underneath the ground. It's a hugely emotive and argumentative uh, subject. I know you've debated it a number of times on the Headline London programme. Um, what the campaigners today are campaigning for agrees with the report from the Environmental Audit Committee. That's a group of MPs from all parties who say that there are too many risks uh, to pollution, both water and noise, a number of other issues, to, to carry on as it is. They want the government to put a, a, a certain halt and they also want the government to propose that there be no fracking at all in certain areas of the outstanding national beauty, national parks and areas where we get our national water supply on. So today outside Parliament over the next couple of hours we're expecting a number of campaigners, several high profile ones too, to try and influence what's going on in the chamber behind me a little later on this afternoon. Thanks Luke. Well, the government says the development of shale gas industry will be a boost to the economy, creating tens of thousands of jobs in um, London. But an environmental audit committee report says pushing ahead could cause the UK to miss its targets for the reduction of carbon emission. And that's something that's been welcomed by anti-fracking campaigner Joe Correy from um, Talk Fracking. And he joins me now. Thanks so much for joining us, Joe. Hi. I know you did want to be at that um, protest. But, um, Let's understand this exactly. The government is saying this is going to be a good move. It makes, it makes the UK less reliant on imported gas. You say otherwise. Yeah, I mean, that's just nonsense. Absolute nonsense. I mean, the, 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 the thing with fracking, I think, that people need to understand is that um, it's a sort of all or nothing type of technology. It doesn't become economically viable until you do it at large scale. Um, and that will take 15, 20, 25 years to um, put into practice. By that time, our international agreements that we've signed, which uh, dictate how much carbon we're allowed to put into the atmosphere, will make the whole industry redundant. And the only thing it will be doing is trying to compete with renewable energy. So, you know, that's, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about long-term issues. We're talking about climate change. And really what we have now is a sort of dog's dinner of a mess um, in terms of the legislation and this industry that the government's trying to um, rush through at breakneck speed. You know, it's even come out. George Osborne's been writing personal letters to ministers and other people to, uh, to back, this, um, back this industry. And, uh, you know, the regulations aren't in place. That was another finding from the um, Environmental Audit Committee yeah. that they felt the regulations were not joined up. Um, there weren't enough skilled people to be able to enforce them. And we're talking about some really serious health issues. I mean, you know, we've got um, clear links now between birth defects in children and the, and the chemicals that they are using. But at the same time, they're trying to roll this out even in Ricelip well, in well, London. Well, this, you this, know. This, is, this is what you're saying, Joe. Mm. Look, early on we had mm. Nick Greeley. Now he is an energy consultant. He's and the guy that's indeed, applying for the licence to he's frack in Ricelip. He's applying for licence yeah, indeed, and indeed in London. And yeah. um, of course he supports fracking. Let's hear what he I had know. to say about this. Yeah, in 48 other states in the United States, it has not been banned. So why should we use the negative example of one. It's interesting that people who are against fracking always use the exact same tactics used by climate change deniers, which is to cherry pick data and which is to say they take one bad example and of course there are going to be some bad examples and they're going to play a gotcha kind of moment, exactly like climate change deniers do. Uh, it's climate change deniers wrote the book and anti-fracking people then are running with it. Now what happens in the United States is that natural gas is now cheaper than coal and is substituting for coal for a great extent, which is cutting their CO2 targets. Because that is all what it's about, is cutting CO2. Also people, uh, there's this misconception that it is bad for renewables. We believe in a mix of everything except coal. We say wind, solar, natural gas, um, 
efficiency, of course, job number one, and, and nuclear. We have no problem with any other energy source except for coal. I mean, what Nick Greeley is saying there, that um, anti-fracking campaigners are, are cherry-picking information to their advantages. Is that what you're doing? I mean, you gave me a lot of research there, a lot of facts and figures, it, but how conclusive You know, there's so it? much involved in this thing, and I think one of the, the biggest um, issues with fracking in the UK is the way that the government has tried to introduce it through the back door, essentially, and that's why we've got such well, a Well, you say the back door, but we have a committee. He's set this committee to take a but look But the committee is coming out with their findings on the day that they're supposed to be voting on, on this uh, infrastructure bill. People need to understand this information. We need to discuss it. It needs to be out on the table. Not having uh, reports on what it's going to do to house prices in the UK and do to the rural economy that are then redacted so nobody can even see what it says before they're supposed to vote on it, the whole thing's a stitch up. And, um, and maybe, you know what, may, I'm, I'm prepared to listen, you know, if, it, if it's really that potentially great, let's hear the facts about it. But we don't. What we hear is spin. Well, and well, then when we look well, at the, the evidence... Size, it, could create, it could create jobs, it could make us yeah. less reliant on... Well, let me just fuel, ask you one... Let me ask you one... It could be a disaster for our economy. Just imagine, for example, all the homes and property that it surrounds a fracking site. Who wants to live next door to something that runs 24 hours a day, flares off gas, puts chemicals into the air, puts your family and your health at risk? Who would choose to live there? They wouldn't. The prices of property will go down the toilet. When that happens, look at all the small business loans that are connected to those property values. What happens to those businesses? What happens to the local tourism? What happens to... None, no, nobody's looked at this. What happens to how, the insurance to, on your, on your, on going your going house value? How are we going to find out if you don't even give them the chance to explore it, to find, to find out exactly what can and can't be achieved? And that's something someone like Nick Greeley is trying because to do with his Because license. I'm saying to you that the, the clear um, issue with fracking is that you can't be a bit pregnant. You can't do a little bit of it and see how it goes. It doesn't work economically. It only works economically at mass scale. And if you put it at mass scale, then what happens is we completely um, fall down on all of our uh, uh, commitments to reduce carbon into the atmosphere, which is about climate change. And we'll only know that at the critical time when we're supposed to have reduced it. F fossil fuels represent fossilised thinking. It's on its way out. We have to wean ourselves off of this stuff. We're not supposed to be looking for more of it. In fact, the, what the IPCC report says is that out of conventional wells all around the world, that's conventional oil, gas, coal, 80% of that has to stay in the ground to avo right. avoid catastrophic so, climate change. So mm -hmm. looking for more of it mm -hmm. is a complete giant leap in into the abyss. OK, so what are you hoping you know? to get from today? What are you hoping... I'm hoping that people are going to see sense. I'm hoping that people are actually going to represent their constituents, the MPs. So that's, you know, that's what democracy is about. Not representing business interests or pressure from the Cabinet or pre pressure from George Osborne. I'm hoping they're actually going to represent their constituents because fracking is deeply unpopular and the way they're pushing it through is highly undemocratic. And I think that's what the message from Talk Fracking is. We're not particularly anti-fracking group, we're pro-democracy. You know, we want okay. people to be involved and to actually decide whether or not they want this poisonous industry next to their homes and next to their schools or not. All right, well, Joe Corrate, thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to have a lot more on that protest and indeed keep you updated on, on that debate later on this afternoon. Welcome back to Headline London. Now to our top story today. And hundreds of anti-fracking campaigners are protesting outside Parliament today, calling on fracking to be put on hold. They say they want the government to take a proper look at the growing body of evidence showing its harmful impact. Well, Luke Blackall is outside Parliament now. Um, Luke, um, what are protesters hoping to exactly achieve today? Well, as you can see, the protest has now grown over, over the last few minutes. These protesters are here because it coincides with the last reading of the infrastructure bill. It's a big bill that covers a number of areas of Britain's infrastructure future. One of the key tenets of that is fracking. That's getting shale gas from underneath the earth. Um, earlier this morning, it was, it was revealed that the Environmental Audit Committee, that's a group of MPs from across Parliament, had recommended that fracking be halted, that we don't do anything more 
more because of potential danger to the environment and to water pollution. Furthermore, these protesters would like it to be stopped in all areas of outstanding national beauty and national parks and anywhere that we get the nation's water supply from going on. The protest is growing. They're going to be out here all day hoping to influence those people across the road who will be reading that and voting upon it, hoping to get some amendments made. Earlier on, I spoke to Bianca Jagger. She's one of the more high-profile campaigners. She'll be speaking a little later, along with the likes of Caroline Lucas, the Green MP, uh, and several others from from Friends of the Earth and other environmental groups. And Bianca Jagger explained why she was here and why it was so important for her to be campaigning. David Cameron um, doesn't really care about a way of life, our uh, environment, uh, water sources, about uh, air quality, and that the idea that he's introducing a, a legislation today that will allow the fracking industry to be able to frack from under our homes without our permission and in violation of our most fundamental human right and of our democratic process. It's, as you can see for Bianca Jagger, an issue not just of environmental issues, but also human rights. The people I've spoken to here certainly seem extremely passionate. They are, the protest has also been involved with several unions who feel that this is actually a political issue, but this infrastructure bill widens out into issues of privatisation and not just fracking. Um, later on, we'll be hearing from a few more of those protesters. Thanks, Luke. That was Luke Blackhall in West.